Welcome to the No BS Spiritual Book Club's live streaming interview series, where leading new thought teachers, speakers, and authors share the intimate stories behind the 10 best spiritual books that inspired them the most on their spiritual journey. From well-known classics to hidden gems you might never have heard of, the No BS Spiritual Book Club saves you time and money by sharing reliable recommendations from those who've walked the path before you. The No BS Spiritual Book Club, the only No BS guide to the best spiritual books to inspire your own journey of self-discovery. Here's your host, founder of the No BS Spiritual Book Club, Sandy Sedgebeer. Hello and welcome with us today to share the 10 best spiritual books that inspired his life journey is spiritual business practitioner and researcher Jeffrey Stegman, who is the co-founder of Focused Life Force Energy, otherwise known as FLFE, or Fluffy to some of its fans. Um, FLFE provides tools and teaches how to use high consciousness fields for personal evolution and to create personal sanctuary. Now, if you're wondering what that means, stay tuned because Jeffrey will be telling us more about high consciousness fields and the little known influences that are greatly affecting us after we've discussed the 10 books that inspired him on the path that led to his becoming an avid researcher on the evolution of consciousness and high consciousness fields. Jeffrey Stegman, welcome. Thank you, Sandy. It's great to be here. So tell me about your relationship with books. I was I was that kid uh, with a book in my hand all the time, all through childhood. Um, I was on the couch with a book. I was in a tent with a book. I was in my treehouse with a book. Um, they they're just always been with me. I always have a stack, you know, mm. of books books to read uh, constantly, and they were they were my escape as a young child. Science fiction was. I loved Philip K. Dick and um, many other authors that were really diving deep into the human psyche and time travel and, you know, other world intelligences. Do you recall the first book, I'll call it a spiritual book or an inspirational mm -hmm. book that really mm -hmm. expanded your thinking and kind of, wow, mm -hmm. changed things for you? Well, I think the earliest book for me was, um, well, it was related to dolphins. Oh. So when I was a kid, I went, I loved the sea and uh, I went to a camp called Sea Camp in Florida and um, I got to spend time with dolphins. And so I really got obsessed with dolphins and whales and that intelligence uh, that was there. And so I found this book called The Mind of the Dolphin by Dr. John Lilly. Mm. And um, it was fascinating. I mean, they were, they, they took a house in St. Thomas and they configured it so a dolphin and a person could live in it together. So the floors were flooded. They had cham deeper channels, you know, and uh, they had a male dolphin and a woman living together. And there were no other contact with no other dolphins or people, you know, they were just together. And so, just the the bond that developed, the communication that developed, and um, at the end they they let all the dolphins go because one of them had committed suicide. So it was just, it's, I'm feeling it right now. It's wow. just a uh, a deep dive as a kid into wow, this is really an intelligent species, and we're not treating it as such. Um, but I wanted to know more. Yeah. So I followed um, Dr. Lilly's work more. And he wrote a number of papers and other things about dolphin and non-human intelligence. Um, so that that cracked me open, you know, it's kind of following on the science science fiction mm -hmm. yeah. of, of the possibilities of, you know, humans aren't the only intelligent species. In fact, we may be behind the ball of, of, of many others. Uh, but his next book 
which was Center of the Cyclone, uh, which, you know, was the first, first book on my list, was a near-death experience that he had. Uh, he, was in, he was a doctor. He's injecting vitamins, got some air bubbles accidentally, and he, he had a near-death experience. And he went the, the classic down the tunnel uh, it, to the light and then began talking to these guides. And, uh, I mean, I was like, that must have been 12 when I was reading this. I was 11 or 12. I was, like, super excited. Um, that, um, so this experience, he, he intended to recreate it. So, and he took a very scientific approach to it, which I really appreciated. You know, that, what is this? How do we recreate it? Is it just in the mind? Is it beyond the mind? And um, he started using float tanks, you know, sensory deprivation, which was big uh, in the 60s and 70s, and then LSD. So that book kind of opened my mind to beyond life, uh, the continuation of consciousness, continuation of life, and that there are these intelligences that guide us and that are there for us all the time. So that was... Uh, really had to be my first spiritual book, even though the dolphins were really something I felt really akin with. Yeah. Yeah. That book, The Center of the Cyclone, an autobiography of inner space was published in 1972. And I remember reading my first John Lilly book mm -hmm. uh, in the seventies. And just like you, it was, oh my God, you know, I couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I ended up trying, trying a sensory sensory tank um but it was closet right in my yeah. parents house and um with lsd and it just there were just too many shoes in the closet i couldn't get comfortable so it never never took me anywhere but you uh, were with octopuses yes uh, <laughs> i was hungry for it but yeah 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 i mean his work was just just astonishing I remember reading in one of his autobiographies where he was talking about how the military wanted him to work with them and mm. he just couldn't do it. Mm. He just couldn't do it. Um, you know, for, for good reasons, uh, one mm. now knows. Um, one of the things about dolphins that particularly um, interests me is how mm. they communicate. Mm. And I remember um, reading Joan Ocean's uh, work and she had said that, the, she, she worked with Lily, actually, mm -hmm. and she happened to be in the water and had her first mm -hmm. experience of mm -hmm. dolphins communicating with her. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. And I read a press release um, that was published a few years ago, and I think it was John Stuart Reed, who is um, a guy who works with... Um, uh, what do they call it? It's, it's with sound, somatics, mm -hmm. and another guy in Florida, and they were doing, I don't know what they were doing, but they released a press release to say they now know how they communicate. They are projecting hologram pictures. Mm -hmm. So when Joan Ocean was getting the information, she must mm -hmm. have been seeing something and not mm -hmm. really aware of what she was seeing, but was able to interpret it. Mm -hmm. Just astonishing. That, that makes total sense. I mean, their sonar, and it's beyond just sonar, is, you know, giving them this three-dimensional picture of the sea around them and the way they can herd schools of fish and, you know, mm. use the shoreline as a net sort of to bring fish together. And, um, you know, they're, they're bringing so much information back in to create, to create this through sound or somatics. But I, but I also have to believe there's a consciousness field there you know that's projected just like us humans do and that interfaces with our, our field and and that information can come through that way too yeah yeah um i went on a little journey today you know reminding myself about some of um uh, john lilly's uh work yeah. and i came across and i don't know if you've seen this his maxim and i thought that mm. we really should share it because it says in the province of the mind what one believes to be true either is true mm. or becomes true within certain limits. Mm. These limits are to be found experimentally and experientially. Mm. When so found, these limits turn out to be further beliefs to be transcended. 
In the province of the mind, there are no limits. Isn't that wonderful? That is. That's that's right on the money as far as I know, yeah. too. It's just, and that connects so much to some of my other books and my life work now and what we're doing. Yeah. Um, that that whole idea of projecting your vision. And um, I think it comes down to us as multidimensional beings and creating that solid, solidifying vision in uh, what some people call the astral dimension. Yeah. And the more solid it gets, the more it, it, it starts to manifest. So, yeah, yeah. And well, I book two on your list is Many Lives, Many Masters. This is a popular one. The true story of a prominent psychiatrist, his young patient, and the past life therapy that changed both their lives. Brian Weiss, MD, published in 1988. <laughs> yeah, that book, um, again, came, you know, probably 10 years or more after the, the, the center of the cyclone. And, you know, I'd maybe mo I'd moved away from those spiritual explorations a bit into, you know, high school life. And um, that book just opened me back up into um, this understanding of us as multidimensional beings, that we have um, these past lives and they're not in the past. They're really kind of lining up with us in, as I know now, in these other dimensions where there's no time, like the astral realm, where everything's just lined up together and all of those past lives are affecting us in some way um, that we don't know about, can't think about. Maybe we can go to a past life reader and get some some insight, but it's that was really made, made uh, clear for me because of the way it was written as a skeptic to you know, through, through again, scientific mm. um, proof or evidence through all these different patients that it was real, that something was happening. And just like all frontier science, the first evidence is, is something happening? Not how mm. is it happening or what's the exact theory of why it's happening, but is it real? And mm. for me, that book was, all right, it's real now. It's not a belief. It's like, a, a certain knowingness for me that, that past lives were real. Yeah, yeah. Book number three is Super Synchronicity, Where Science and Spirit Meet by Gary Schwartz, published in 2017. <laughs> yeah, I've come to know Dr. Schwartz. He, he came uh, into FLFE through one of our subscribers. And he's joined our research team and it's been just a wonder to be to be around. And this book, you know, I read it really after getting to know Dr. Schwartz and watching him in action, just noticing synchronicities. He is like the synchronicity master. He'll notice these little pieces that are that line up that are pointers towards something for him personally. And, um, you know, the book goes into great detail of the mathematics of it, which is astounding. I mean, when you get these, what he calls super synchronicities, like, like five to seven, it's one in a billion, you know, that this is a chance occurrence that, mm -hmm. that the idea that, oh, it's just chance, um, really goes out the window in those, in those situations. So what the heck is happening? Right. Um, so for me, it's really opened my eyes to, and it can, goes back to what you said about the visions that we hold, you know, our power to manifest the sort of mutability or changeability of what we think of as hard reality, um, that these synchronicities are, you know, somehow brought together, somehow created that point us in a direction that's important for us. Mm, yeah, I had a conversation um, with Dr. Bernard Beitman, who is a mm. psychiatrist who's written a wonderful book on synchronicities and coincidence. Mm. Um, and uh, he's now set up an official study, probably mm. the first person since Jung to do that. And he has a website called Coincider, 
and um, he, I was saying to him that I we don't know which comes first because I think intention is involved in synchronicity. Mm. I think we project out an intention mm-hmm. and synchronicity occurs. Mm-hmm. Um, so most people think that it's just accidental. You know? <laughs> and there's just, there's no way that it's accidental. Once you get past, you know, two together, like you get to three or four, the, the, the chance is so, so remote. Um, I heard Lee Carroll say, um, you know, of Cryon channeling that synchronicities are the intention, our intention starts, starts, starts the, uh, ball rolling. Yeah. And then our higher self, which is an, you could say a, another dimensional part of us that's much expanded and includes all of our lifetimes and really connection to all that is starts talking to other higher selves. And they arrange these meetings. <laughs> you know, it's part of a like, all right, let's let's make this happen. And you show up at this Long time, you show up at that time. <laughs> Which I love that idea that our higher selves are all talking to each other and setting yeah. these things up for us. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That that's a good visual, actually. Mm. Very good visual. Yeah. Um, book number four, Leadership in the New Science, Discovering Order in a Chaotic mm. World by Margaret J. Wheatley, published in 1992. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I was in business running organizations and just really looking for meaning and purpose. Like, how could I bring in a new way of leading into into organizations? And this book really set me on a new path. It was the, um, really the, looking at science, looking at nature and looking at the natural world and the natural patterns and that they're present in organizations, that it's not a separate thing, right? That fractal patterns, patterns of information repeating were there and could be used and harnessed in an organization. Um, And that, again, the holding a vision and creating a reality is so important and she called it an invisible field i probably now call it a consciousness field with the information in it of the vision and that vision can permeates everyone in the organization and you can talk about it but it's also being held uh if it's a strongly held vision that's moving the organization towards you know towards that future so that that was an important piece from her is holding that vision and after that book, I really consciously worked on holding holding a vision, a you know a big vision uh, of you know win 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 uh, for everyone, where you know the organization would do well, everyone in it would do well, the customers would do well, the competitors would do well. It was just like, how can we um, really succeed in a in a global way with this vision and um, so that became really something I do to this to this day. Uh, the other piece that was really interesting in her work was the natural chaos, in seemingly chaos of change, in the natural world and in organizations where it looks like things are falling apart. You know, volcanoes are going off, hurricanes are showing up, but there is actually in that an implicit order of higher order emerging. And so in, in an organization, it was around, well, all right, we failed at this. The market's taken this terrible turn. Where, what are we going to do? You know, like we've got 50 people counting, hundred people counting on us for their livelihood. So in that chaos, this idea of knowing that there is an order emerging and being being uh, curious and certain that it's coming and watch watch for the information and tom kenyon sort of reinforced that later with his hathor i don't know if you've read any of his half hathor Ooh, yeah missives um about the void point where it's kind of the same in a natural disaster as maybe when you pass over that there's this comp- breaking apart this chaos this um 
disappearing of of those things that we know as reality, right? Those those little guideposts are all gone, and so we're in we're in like the chrysalis, right? We're in, in the 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 butterfly is not yet born, and it's just a lot of swirling pieces. And that the advice was: be curious, watch for signs, and follow the synchronicities, basically. Yeah. And that's, that's served me very well. That's good advice for this time. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I, love, I love what you said in your description is that you took on the role of the vision keeper. Mm. Nice phrase. Yeah, and it's for some reason, uh, you know, I just have that vision, like it's, it's, it's visual for me. Yeah. It's not words on a paper. It's like I can see it and feel yeah. it and taste it. And so that's been um, my pleasure to do that mm. so book number five spiral dynamics by don mm. edward beck and christopher cowan now mm. spiral dynamics has taken on kind of you know there's been branches of it haven't mm. there over the years mm. i mm. could not find a book that was titled just this mm. Mm. so i yeah so i don't have a a, a date yeah for it, but um, tell us how you came across this and how it impacted you. Well, Spiral Dynamics Integral, you might you might find. Uh, well, in my search for a different way of doing business and, and leading organizations, uh, I came across Ken Wilbur and his work. And um, I didn't put one of his books on here because I, I don't know if I can intelligently discuss any of his books. They're so <laughs> dense and so much great information there. Yeah. So I took a um, uh, integral business course in, in Denver where he was living. And um, Spiral Dynamics was part of that, which led me to the books. So it's, you know, it's, it's a level of consciousness um, map and way of thinking about behavior and really how people see the world in terms of where they are on this map. So it's very interesting for me in, in an organization and just in everyday life and really understanding what's going on in the world too, is you have these levels of consciousness that, that we're all going through and they, they can start you know, they start at, you know, a very basic level, you know, just survival level. But kind of what we deal with uh, in the spiral dynamics model, they're, they're by color, is what they call red, which is a very individualistic, um, impulsive, you know, strong individual uh, meme, you could say, or way of being or value system. So the spiral dynamics is really about a value system, how you see the world. And, and the red values the strength. Like if whoever's the baddest MF is the one you respect, right? I mean, it's just like dock worker, teenagers, you know, it's, it's, it's that um, really uh, intense individualistic group. And at that level of consciousness, if you are approaching them with a, well, let's, you know, let's all decide together and, you know, you tell me your opinion, I'll tell you mine and she'll tell hers and we'll all come to a decision. They're, you can't reach them, right? They're going to blow it up somehow. Yeah. So you have to be stronger than them. You have to, you know, you have to approach them in a way that they respect. So, you know, and there's shadow sides and in spiral dynamics and strengths. And that the strength of that group is they're the ones forging the new pathways, right? They leave the nest, they leave the paradigm, they go off and they create something new. And that's, that's very important. And on the shadow side, they're very, can be very destructive. Um, so, but that, you know, morphs into the, the the next level, which is what they call the blue level, which is more about law and order, um, you know, police rules, 
and the respect or the values is for who is who is the top of the chain, the pyramid, the hierarchy. So the hierarchy is important for the society to kind of bring those reds under, you know, control. And, you know, it's like when someone who's in that red level of consciousness goes into the army, that's what they, they get them into that hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. So, and there's, again, there's each of these levels has its own uh, shadow, its own value or, you know, what's good about it. So it really helped me to see, meet people where they are, especially in a group, in an organization, like, all right, this person is blue. They don't want to be, they don't want to be in a discussion either. They want to be told by the hierarchy, by the top person, what to do. And they will jump in eagerly. It fulfills them. It's part of their mission in life to be, if they agree with the organization, to be part of that. So that's not to be discounted, you know, it's important to the whole. And, and it's a lot of what I learned in this is each part is so important to the whole. And it's not like, well, you're at a low level, this high level is better. It's always um, a role to play in the flux of, of innovation and change and uh, societal and, gr and growing up. So there's, there's so much, there's so much there. And it was my really start to levels of consciousness, which has been playing out over and over again and is an important part of our work in FLFE. Mm, yeah. You said that it's especially, especially compelling is its explanation of the chaos during personal and massive cultural oh. and worldwide change. Again, back, back you know, to the chaos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back to the chaos. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So in the spiral dynamics maps, so they, they lay out these maps and they're in a spiral. Um, and when you go from one level, when you start bumping up against the top of, of, of that level, say you're in blue and you're bumping up at the top of blue and there's your, what you, what you look to for authority is starting to crumble and starting to be seen as not integrous and things are falling apart. Um, you know, the next level in spiral dynamics is orange, which is entrepreneurial. Again, it's kind of individualistic where you, you move into creating your own, your own uh, value through your own contribution and uh, mm -hmm. um, innovation. But that gap in between, it's that time when your old view is dying and it's ugly and things are falling apart and you're disillusioned. And you, there, those, again, it's kind of like the markers of, of your life are, are not steady anymore. They're dissolving or falling apart. That then emerges the new, you know, the, the new upper or, or higher order of, of consciousness. Mm. So in that, in that chaotic part, and we believe this happened, we did some studies on this as well, and with Clayton and I and FLFE, and you look at certain people who have had very high levels of consciousness, but then they had a dark night of the soul where things just didn't sink anymore. They're just, they couldn't connect in the way they used to connect to their higher power, to whatever, whoever theirs they're really going to, um, and nothing seemed right. Everything, everything was, is, uh, losing its, its power or its, mm -hmm. or its, its energy. And that is really a reconstitution to a higher way of connecting and a higher way of, of, of seeing the world. So that's again, back to, you know, what the earlier books, the chaos part, yeah. And being being able to be in that and knowing that there's a new order emerging and watching, watching for the signs of it and using your vision to what do you want the new order to be? Yes. Um, participate. <laughs> yeah, John John Peterson in the Arling Institute is he's a great guy to follow. He um he, his whole his whole uh, probably last five to ten years has been what's our vision for the future? 
how can we uh, hold this vision with enough people, with enough power uh, to, to realize it? Yes, yes. And again, you know, it's just so perfect for right now and for people to understand that it may look like it's all falling apart, but it is going to come back together in a better way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a short break now. You're listening to a No BS Spiritual Book Club's 10 Best Spiritual Books interview and sharing the 10 books that had the biggest influence on his life journey is spiritual business practitioner, researcher and co-founder of Focused Life Force Energy, otherwise known as FLFE, Jeffrey Stegman. We'll be back with more of Jeffrey Stegman's 10 Best Spiritual Books after this brief break. Stay tuned. Om Times TV. Maya Angelou once said that there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and when I'm not hosting Om Times Media's flagship radio show, What Is Going On, and the No BS Spiritual Book Club, I help people share their untold stories. Books are my life, my joy, and my passion, and there is no greater reward than helping aspiring writers get their books out of their heads and into the hands of those who are waiting to read them. If you feel that you have a book in you, but don't know where to begin, visit sedgebeer.com, click on the Work With Me tab, and find out how my experience helping others tell their stories might be just what you've been looking for. That's sedgebeer.com, S-E-D. G-B-E-E-R.com. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Own Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back. Jeffrey Stegman, book number six, Power Versus Force, The Hidden Determinants of Human Behavior by David Hawkins, published in 2004. I was not surprised to see this on the list. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it fits so well um, with the current times and what we've been talking about, the chaos and the change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just followed on Spiral Dynamics for me. Um so well and dr hawkins you know for those of you that don't know him he's you know was a psychiatrist had a very large practice and um he had an early near-death experience and ended up at a high very high level of consciousness and then wrote a series of books about it and power versus force really um kind of fits in really well just that title i mean you know the power of higher consciousness, the power of these visions that we've been talking about, that the that's where the real, you know, energy movement um, bringing into, into reality occurs and force versus force, which is a lower consciousness way of, of, of getting, getting what you want through, you know, forcing someone else to do it, to use um, physical force. So that 
you know, to me that really looks at today's world. There's so much um, on the force world that that is creating some of this chaos that we're seeing now. And um, we'll, we're starting to see some higher consciousness things emerge. And his book, I mean, all of his books, they're, they're, they're so deep. And he created a scale of consciousness from, it's never zero, something above zero to infinity. And in this scale, um, infinity would be divinity and something, all, everything always has some level of consciousness, whether it's a chair or a table or, or a plant or rock or anything. And each point upwards, 10 times more energy available, more power uh, to manifest what it is you want to do um, to, to create the life you want. So, you know, his scale further explains where we are. Um, the world has been below 200 on the Hawkins map for most, most of the past 5,000 years or more, and it went over 200 you know, in, in, in the uh, 1960s and now, and then with COVID, it went back, back under 200 down to the fear level. And you can just see at those levels, how people react, how they see the world is really through, through those levels. Um, so it's, again, it's another lens for looking at human behavior, looking at ourselves and where, the evolutionary path could lead us. And in some of his books, really, he gives you those steps and and, and how to do it. Um, I just love watching him on YouTube or reading his books. There's like a consciousness field around his video. Mm. He was in the 900s on, on the Hawkins map. So a thousand is kind of the peak before, I don't know what happens to you combust uh, spontaneously or something but it's it seems to be what humans can handle is a thousand and that's where you know jesus and zoaster and mohammed and others reached that uh at various times in their lives and 500 is where love starts where and unconditional love's like 560 540 to 570 and then 600 becomes the nonlinear realms um which you could say enlightenment or a different way of operating in the world with much more power. Um, Amma the Hugging Saint, have you, have you ever been to her? Have you ever gotten a hug from her? No, I haven't, but I know lots of people who have. Mm. There's, there's some power right there. Um, yeah. When we did some, you know, consciousness testing of her aura and, and what it's like, and as you walk closer to her, you can feel it in your body. It just, you start vibrating. And when you get that hug, it's like in the 900s. I mean, it just washes away all of your mother, father issues. You know, it's just like, poof. Um, and her power goes over into the spirit, into the physical world with everything that she's done in India with all the public bathrooms throughout India and the schools and universities that she's created. I mean, she is just a powerhouse and she's at 850 on the Hawkins map. Mm. Do you, do you measure the consciousness of every employee? Well, we, we use the Hawkins map and we use kinesiology or muscle testing. We have a team of people. So we, we check each other. We make sure we're, we're doing that. And yes, before we hire someone, we check, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're looking to hire loving, loving people. Mm -hmm. And our organization is full of loving people. And mm -hmm. so when people call into the office, they get love. And that's what could be better than, than that. Yeah. Um, and so we've, yeah, we've created a, um, um, you know, kind of a pre HR look at at intention because also knowing what someone's uh level of consciousness of their intent towards business for instance for some people you know rightfully so have had bad experiences in business and had see the the damage that's been done and they their intent is low towards business i completely understand that but 
when you move into a business and your intent is low towards business, it, it's going to be the bad guy eventually, you know? So yeah. that's something to, to look at. Um, so yeah, we, we measure everything. We're total geeks about it. Um, and uh, having a team really can help you stay on the path because it's very easy to get off into um, your own beliefs or what you want something to, to, to be. And unless you've got two to three or four people all testing, okay, what did you get? You know, what, here's what I got. And if you start being off more than five points or so, it's like, okay, yeah. let's, let's just take a look at what's going on. Drink more water. Water is just completely essential to connecting to our inner guidance, which is what kinesiology does. Mm -hmm. um, muscle testing and, well as pendulums many of those and you can just feel your heart the truth of something or the not truth of something through the expansion and contraction but the yeah. water's the key um for that if you get dehydrated you just can't test mm. book number seven is one that did surprise me see it on your list it's the raw material by <laughs> R. elkins um carla ruckett jim mccarthy published in 1984. How did this book come hmm. across your radar? Hmm. Where did I find that book first? Um, yeah, I'll have to think. Uh, that'll come to me in a minute. Uh, I think it was through, um, I was on Gaia, on one of the Gaia shows that I was watching. And um, yeah, these books, first of all, the channeling in the books are, is really interesting the way they approach it. They're very, very, very careful about how they do the channeling. Everything is in exact alignment and they're checking the energy of the person. And, um, and that has helped me in that connection to the other side that occurs naturally for all of us, but that we can um, take further, you know, with practice to be really uh, careful about how you do it. Uh, yeah, there's, I, I read all of these, like in a fever dream. I was like, I'd gotten bitten by a spider and I had this terrible high fever for like four or five days. And I just like <laughs> read through all these books, the, the, the raw material, the law of one, as they call, call it. And there's some just really good pieces in there. It's, it's a bit dense and the language is, is, is a little bit difficult. But um, the thing that I really, really lit me up was the idea about service to others and service to self, about these two paths. And we're clear, clearly in the service to others path and what we're doing with FLFE. And in the service to self path, you know, I've always tended to think of it as you know, negative, bad, you know, just lots of, lots of um, mm -hmm. pushing against that. But what I really saw in this book was that that's a valid path as well. Yeah. And it's, it, um, you know, it's leads to, it's the hierarchy and um, dominations part of it, big part of it. Um, so that service to self is really, creates these, some of these structures that are negative that we see and some that maybe that we don't see. Um, and what I really, what really gave me a lot of peace there was I can just bless them on their way and not be dominated, you know, to, to do what I need to be sovereign. And um, that what they say clearly in the book is that if you're on the service to others path, there's more help that there's non-human intelligences around us, whether you call it angels, ETs, whatever you, you know, guides, um, that those are there for us. And if we call on them, they'll help us on that service to others path. And the service to self doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, they can do other things to get information, of course, but, but they don't have that higher consciousness higher intelligence help that we do so that's 
that was to me that was good news um and gave me some uh peace in thinking about them and just blessing them on their way um without uh giving them any foothold yeah yeah without giving your power away mm. book number eight is you said the most important book on your list it is <laughs> the Sasquatch message to humanity book two interdimensional teaching from our elders by Sunbow true brother published I think they were channeled around about 2016, 2017, and the books came out a bit later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going out on a limb here, uh, even more so than the raw material. But uh, <laughs> That's okay. You can go out on a limb here. <laughs> well, so one of the things we do with books now, Sandy, that's really interesting is we measure the level of consciousness of the book. Yes. So that's a measure of the truth of the book. So if you've got something that's like scientifically true, kind of materialistically true, it would be in the 400s, um, something that's, you know, in the love range would be in the 500s. And um, if you get the 600 and above in a book, it starts to be nonlinear in that it's, it's looking under the hood of normal 3D reality, right, of how things work. So these books are at 850. So that's a high, that's a high level of truth. So that got our attention, first of all. Um, now, I, and then I would recommend these books to anybody, but and you, the, the way to look at it is you can just say, well, this is like science fiction. I'll just read it as fiction and, and see what I get out of it. Um, from my understanding, the Sasquatch are multidimensional. They're older, much older than humanity. They are highly intelligent. When we measure them, they're above a thousand on on the Hawkins map, especially the older ones. And they are our big brothers and sisters. And they've been with us through eons of history, uh, times when we knew them and times now where we don't. And um, this book is really a uh, primer on our own multidimensional powers or perceptions. So it's very helpful in that way in that it's telling us, look, you've got these abilities. And here's some understanding of the dimensions, which is really, I found very incredible and useful. Um, these details of the dimensions are some of what we understand normally, but like the astral, what they call, what's known as the astral realm, they call it the alter dimension. And we have an alter body which we've heard that before, astral bodies, and that there's alter matter that, that like our matter, it's less dense, you know, by the same ratio as the, uh, you know, after death, the weight of the body changes, that ratio, I forget, it's like 20 to 100 to 1 or something like that, but that it's less dense, but it's just as real in, in, in that dimension. And that the border between that, say, ultra dimension and this one is is the speed of light. And that when when you are, say, have a strong vision and you're holding that vision, you're putting a lot of energy in it, it's manifesting in that dimension, very real and ultra matter. Mm. And that as it becomes more and more dense and things become, um, say, not vibrating as fast, things can come into form. And that's how they move between dimensions is by raising their vibration. Yeah. Once you get above light speed, um, then you're in this hyper, hyper, hyper space, um, astral realm, altered dimension, as they call it. But what's fascinating about this book is, first of all, the description of the dimensions, you know, at least the first five, and the geometry related to them and it explains so much about what's what's going on with dark matter and the expansion of the universe. They have a totally different explanation for these things. Um, but at the underlying, underlying all of it is consciousness. You know, from, from the very zero dimension, it's consciousness throughout. And then 
as we move from in, in and out of these dimensions, which we can do as, as, as humans, we're using our consciousness uh, to do this. And we're using our consciousness to, to create um, with our visions. So there's so much in these books. I'm, I've read them dozens of times. I mean, book one is more about the history of, of, of this planet and book two is more about dimensions. I'll have to check those out. <laughs> um, number nine, Testimony of Light, an Extraordinary Message of Life After Death by Helen Greaves. And this was published in 1969. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this book was very helpful for, for me when my son passed away last year. Mm -hmm. And um, my partner, Audrey, had read this book when she lost someone. And it's a very clear, like, chronicle of passing over, what's next, what's next, what's next, sort of the patterns of, of um, ascension that are occurring in, in the passing over process. And it helped me to understand what was happening for Miles when he passed over. And he was talking to us through Clayton and through others uh, who were able to talk across the veil very clearly. And he was telling us what he was seeing. And it was very much what was happening in this book. Um, so it was very helpful, like a guide map, mm -hmm. a road map. And um, though this one is from sort of a Catholic perspective, you could say, it was a uh, very progressive spiritual nun who had a friend. Uh, and they were practicing, while they were both alive, they were practicing um, talking to each other through telepathy. So they got really good at talking at any distance. And then when the nun passed away, they kept talking. And she dictated this book to her about what it was like. So there's buildings, there's hospitals, there's all sorts of structures there in, in the altar dimension um, made of altar matter. In this case, the, you know, also known as the astral realm. So... You know, and Miles saw the same thing. He's now living in a cabin by a stream with a garden. Um, and he took a course on the other side of how to understand grief. So this book, you know, really helped me kind of bridge that gap and understand what was happening for him. And I would recommend it to anybody. And uh, there's a number of books that are starting to come out. Um Gary Schwartz has been vetting people that mediums that talk across the veil. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was given a book, um, Wolf's message by, uh, I can't remember her name, Susan, uh, somebody, but they're, they're really very helpful to parents and loved ones behind who can really understand that the consciousness continues, that they're okay. You know, in fact, better than okay. Much without that body and all those, those, um, you know, things that we have to deal with in physical form, they're doing great. Um, and as as a parent, you know, there's nothing better than knowing that your kids are okay. Yeah. Um, and that's almost the ultimate okay. It's like, look, Dad, I'm doing great. You know, and I'm doing all these things, and it's really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so book number 10 is The Water Wizard, The Extraordinary Properties of Natural Water by Victor Schauberger, published in 1999. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Victor Schauberger is a really interesting um, person. He's went away and lived in nature. It's almost like the Anastasia books. I don't know if you've read, read those, but so he, he went away and lived in nature and again, he's Russians there in, in that area. And he came to know water really well. In fact, in such a different way than the traditional understanding of water. And his family in the area where he was from, was there was logging and they were moving logs down these rivers. And he would came to understand the forces of the water um, on things in it, um, including fish swimming upstream like trout. 
And so what he discovered is the, the sort of the natural vortex activity of water that occurs when something is moving forward, say like a trout, that the water is coming alongside and you have a vortex that forms and pushes it, actually pushes it forward. So the reason I picked this as my, in the spiritual side is that his understanding of water is really the blood of the earth. And it's in a real way that this, this is a um, profound movement of water throughout underground, above ground, you know, above the earth in these patterns is, uh, has a spiritual connotation that there is a movement of life that's moving with this water. And these, these vortex movements, like the vortex pattern of implosion, where things are moving in a circular pattern, the spiral closer together, creates what we're seeing, a increase in life force in the water, an increase in energy in the water. And that accounts for really the beneficial effects of like a very natural bubbling stream that's coming down out of a spring down, you know, through rocks, that that water has this very uplifting effect and a very um, important effect on the body. Because as that energy comes into the body, and it's, the FLFE service creates more life force energy as well in environment. Or if you're, you know, in a, in a spiritual place or in a pilgrimage spot, like Lourdes, where the healing water is coming out of the ground, or the Zamzam well, um, in Saudi Arabia, where the water's coming up and has this healing effect, that, that that additional energy comes into the body and then is healing healing the body or giving the innate intelligence of the body more energy to, to heal. But we believe this Schauberger effect of these vortexes is really important in the body for cleaning the interior of your veins and arteries because this, this it's like a counter current like when you notice, I don't know if you've done much canoeing or kayaking, but when you when you go down the stream in the middle, of course, you're carried down. But if you get over to the shore, you go actually upstream. So you have this current that comes back the other direction. Yeah. So that's occurring in our bodies everywhere, and it's part of our natural um, cleansing of the body that's occurring. And with that, uh, we believe that the body's cleansed, the livers are cleaned out, the kidneys are cleaned out, that we can evolve our consciousness much more easily. Because consciousness is also a physical process and it takes um, neuro growing neurons, killing off old ones, uh, growing our nervous system to carry more energy, more light. And so with that energy coming in through good water, we can evolve faster. Mm. It's interesting because, I mean, people love looking at waterfalls. They love being mm. around waterfalls. Mm. Lots of people say that when they're near water, they feel, you mm. know, energized. And mm. in feng shui, you know, one of the things that is often recommended is, you know, if you're walking in your house and there's a wall in front of you, then put a picture of a waterfall there because mm. mm. that's, transforms the energy mm. and enlivens that space. And uh, I've always wondered why that was recommended, but you've just given me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of energy, a lot of chi flowing with water. Yeah. Um, and we've yeah. noticed that that can be detrimental at times, where if you're in a uh, you know, riverside village and the, the river's running right towards your village and it takes takes a turn, that chi kind of flows through the village and it kind of pull away life force energy, make it actually lower in consciousness mm -hmm. there. So that's something that can be compensated for, but it's, you know, it's, it's very complicated what's happening with water on the planet and in our bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's your 10 best lists. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk for a little while about you and the passions that were fired by these books that you love. I mean, clearly, Focused Life Force Energy is your mission, your passion project, yours yes. and Clayton. 
Um, tell me a little bit about it. Tell our audience what it is and mm -hmm. what it does. Mm -hmm. Well, Focus Life Force Energy is based on a technology that Clayton and I discovered in British Columbia. So there is a machine, a system, um, a system that encompasses many parts. So with, with that, we're able to activate a consciousness field. So what that means, first of all, activate everything that a consciousness field needs is already present. It's not, you don't need to project anything. You don't need to send energy. You just, with the proper instructions, you're opening a field that's already, the energy is already there. And we do that all the time when we're thinking of someone else, that experience where you're thinking of someone and they, they call you. Well, when they're dialing your number or looking you up, they're thinking of you. There's a field activated around you and you have that now quantum connection between the two of you and you're thinking of them so that they've already called you, you know, in, in a quantum way before they dial that phone. So that's how we, we, we connect with each other all the time. And, you know, there's studies with twins and mothers and children where that connection is just instantaneous, right? Anywhere in the world. So FLFE is based on that same principle. And the FLFE system, the original machine, had created a uh, very high consciousness, very high chi, high life force energy zone. Uh, originally, there were stacks of plates and coils, floor to ceiling, electrically connected. And um, in a, you know, following on Nikola Tesla's footsteps, high speed alternating current and the voltage both being adjusted. And what occurred is those input stacks were pulling in energy and the one output stack was concentrating it in one spot. And that's where that quantum connection can occur. And, you know, we, the, we were able to take that same kind of system without, it turned out we could amplify it after the fact we didn't need the high speed alternating current, which is, you know, a little difficult to work with. Um, but that, that space, that very high consciousness, high um, life force space, if you put a unique identifier in that, much like we think of the person, we really kind of think of their essence while we're dialing that phone, we're, we've made that connection already. Mm. So, a, so a, a, an address, uh, coordinates, uh, are places on the planet, they're, they're, they're uniquely identified. Now, in some countries, the it's more by word of mouth, right? The postman knows it's the third driveway on the left lane, right? There's not a courthouse record. So in those cases, an address does not work with FLFE. It won't associate. But in a country like the U.S. where you have very definite boundaries for an address, you have the, the lot line, the exact coordinates uh, laid out in the, in the courthouse. And so with, with that sort of unique identifier, there's an instant connection and a field is activated at the home. And that field is a consciousness field. It's not a frequency and it's, it's love. It's in the love zone. So it's 550 on the Hawkins map. So it's, um, it's like going to grandma's on Sunday and everybody's eating and loving on each other. It's just that love feeling in that field. So number one, 550 has way more life force energy in it. So the body picks that up, the water in the body picks that up and you become healthier over time. But there's also a rise in consciousness that happens because we're all a mix of different domains. We've got, you know, relationships, we've got finances, we've got um, career life work, we've got all these different kind of pieces of ourselves. Some are low, you know, we had a, something happened in our childhood and we got yelled at or spanked or, wow, I'm never going to do that again. Never, you know? And so that, that little unconscious piece is at five years old or six years old, wherever we were. 
So those start to rise in a high consciousness field and things start to loosen up and we start to become free of those patterns and beliefs, unconscious patterns and beliefs that are holding us back. And people in that field, it's like going to Lourdes or one of the pilgrimage sites like Zam Zam Well, people feel uplifted um, and things happen pretty quickly. Can you, I mean, there's a unique identifier. Yeah. Can you actually, you know, yeah. use a telephone? Yeah, phones are, phones are an important part of the service. So with the phone, there's only one, you know, one cellular number like that. So that is uniquely identified. We activate a field around the phone. And within nine feet of that field um, is a higher consciousness and other benefits that we've been able to sort of engineer into this where we're activating the field and we're also asking. So these are requests of divinity that go into this field. We're asking for various things to mitigate EMFs. So we discovered Shungite, the, the energetic essence of Shungite was really helpful for EMFs. Mm -hmm. um, and we come at it completely from a consciousness point of view. So EMFs lower consciousness. So they're bad for the environment from our point of view. And people have just, some people have really bad reactions. Like they're really sensitive. So we did a research study uh, with the University of, of uh, Pennsylvania researcher, Dr. Gary Schwartz was part of it with EMF sensitives. And we saw a big drop in symptoms on the FLFE service with EMF sensitives. So this was both uh, intensity and uh, frequency of symptoms, like sleep. Wow. Is this an, a, a good idea? to suggest it for children because so many children you know the amount of time they spend on their phones and what they are getting uh you know i think all of us uh, agree is not healthy is this something that parents would want for their kids yeah we have many many parents with uh, who have their children's phone on the flfe flfe everywhere the phone service is called and we have a children's product that's lower cost because parents were, well, we've got our house on, we've got our phones on, we want to put our children's on. Can you help us with the cost? So we have a lower cost product for children's phones. And yeah, it's not just the EMF or maybe it's part of EMF, but it's, it's anxiety is really yeah. just rampant these days and depression, yeah. um, suicide. And the, and the dissonance. You know, yeah. cognitive dissonance. Yeah. Not not feeling like they belong. Um, so the F of the V field, so, a, so an unconditional love field is you're bathed in love. Um, so there's there's that the feeling of being loved, first of all. Second, there's more energy for you there, um, which can help get you past depression. We have we haven't done a research on this one yet, but we have three or four like really profound depression stories where people were depressed and they, someone put the service on, they didn't even know it was on. And we had one man, he was a young man. He was in an accident. He was paralyzed and he was in bed for months, uh, probably most of a year, just heading, heading for the exit. Right. And uh, his sister put FLFE on and she came home the next day. He was out of, bed in his wheelchair outside so those kind of things are so you, when you talk about cost um what does it cost well the the the, the flagship service the full service is 35 dollars a month that's not too bad so we, yeah we've kept it we've kept it just as low as we possibly could um we have a big staff of people in the office the the love zone and people call in and can talk to someone um, Saturday, Sunday, up to 10 o'clock at night, Pacific time. So we, we really feel strongly about having someone to talk to someone to help you with service, to help you with your growth. I mean, 
they're not counselors, but they're there to listen and um, help you drink enough water. Um, so, so we kept it at 35. The children's one is down to $10 a month for the children's phone. You do, you do um, free um, trials, don't you? So that people can experience it for themselves. It's so nonlinear, Sandy. We we had to give it away at for you know to get people to try it because it's so out of the box, and you know that's why we focus so much on science and we have quite a quite a big research page. But the free trial is no credit card, no pressure. Um, we you have to work at actually subscribing after it goes off, and people notice they they enjoy it when it goes on. Many people can feel it. Um, and then all of a sudden they don't feel it and they'll think, oh, my free trials ended and then they sign up, but it's, it's 15 days for a home. And then you can do 15 days on the phone or vice versa. So really it's 30 days free. There's no, no cost at all. Mm. And now out. you're, you're doing something with water bottles. Yeah, that's, that's coming. Um, we're releasing that probably be after we re release this for the first time, but yeah, the part part of the service is experimenting, is that we want to give everybody tools to be your own researcher, be your own consciousness researcher. Mm -hmm. So when you do a free trial, you have a control panel or customer portal, you can get in, you can turn it off, turn it on, turn it up, turn it down. And, and then within that portal, there's all sorts of resources. There's our podcast and lots of lots of webinars. And we'll have the water bottle. So we're going to have a, a water bottle where we've we've activated a field uh, through a picture of a water bottle. And that water now is much more energized. It's up in the 850 zone on the Hawkins map, which really helps that Schauberger, Victor Schauberger effect yeah. in the body. Yeah. Yeah. And it just feels good to drink it. I know mm. you've tried it, haven't you? Uh, I'm actually trying it now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm drinking more water. I'm enjoying drinking water, which is not a natural state for me, but it's <laughs> becoming one. <laughs> yeah. For most people, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We've done, Gary Schwartz has done quite a bit of research with the water. So we, so the way we work is we'll do a beta test first. First we'll do an alpha where it's very small, just Clayton and I and a few people. Then we'll do a beta test with the staff and we'll do a lot of uh, surveys and other kinds of research on it. And then, then we'll go to a, a larger re release. Mm -hmm. So this one's been in beta for, for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Have you done a taste test with it yet? I have noticed it tastes better. Yeah, side by side taste test. We tests. have really, yeah. really hard water in my area. Mm. Really hard water. And um, no, I haven't done it side by side, but then I, I tend only to drink water out of my bottle. You know, I don't drink yep. it from the tap. So mm -hmm. it's already been, you know, whatever's been done to it is already done by the time it reaches me. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's why I was so interested in, in the water wizard, you yeah. know, Victor Schauberger's work. Yeah. And, um, and plants as well. I mean, we've done quite a bit of research on plants because people noticed just, wow, my plants are growing so well. My grass is much greener than the, and I have to mow it more often than my neighbor. I haven't um, thought of that one. <laughs> yeah. but I will now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, I think we're up to six different water or plant experiments now. The last one being a uh, 10,000 acre farm where that was a double blind uh, study where the farmer didn't know which parts of his field were on FLFE. And uh, so we had, we used coordinates and we created zones that were on the FLFE service. So there was a high consciousness field activated. And then we had control acres and they had a big combine, a big uh, John Deere tractor that was harvesting and it could measure the yield per acre. And it created this big map of the whole farm and it was in different colors by yield. So that data then went to Gary Schwartz and he analyzed the, the results per acre and what, you know, what was in the FLFE zone and what was in the control zone. 
and it was a 22% increase in yield. Wow. And it was kind of a semi drought at that time. Mm -hmm. So there was clearly additional life force, energizing water just created this more life, you know, supported life to, to thrive. Mm -hmm. And our mission is support the optimal conditions for evolution, but it's also for just a good life, just a happy, yeah. joyous life. Wonderful thing for people who are growing their own vegetables as more and more yeah. people are mm -hmm. growing their own food. Yeah. I, uh, we're out of time now, I'm afraid. I mean, it's uh, been fascinating speaking with you, and I'm sure you've got lots more wonderful stories to tell about what you're doing with this technology, but um, we have to leave it here. So thank you so much for adding your 10 best books mm. to the No BS Spiritual Book Club's library of recommendations, Jeff. Great to be here. It was a great journey for me to go back through and look look at all those books and see how they all connected together. Mm, yeah. And I just love getting new books to think about and put on my list. <laughs> so that's it for today, unfortunately. Um, you can find out more information about FLFE Focused Life Force Energy at flfe.net. You can also join the facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash focus life focused life force energy mm -hmm. that's it for this week um i'll be back at the same time next week with another edition of the no best in, uh, interview series till then it's goodbye from me and thank you again to jeff Stegman. thank you thanks jeff